I'm Stuart Hooper, a lecturer in political science and PhD researcher. Be sure to subscribe if you are new here to the channel where I cover international politics from a critical angle. I'm not trying to support one country over another, one politician over another, but instead look at the real power structures in our world and think about how we can analyze them from a perspective of generating some positive change in the world because by God do we need it. Please follow me on social media at the other links below and let's take a look at what these generals have been saying about the current state of world politics and just how close we are to World War III and a nuclear confrontation with either Russia or China. In either case, the end of the world. The first article that I want to take a look at is this very long interview with a retired Army Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis of the United States who warns that nuclear war is a very real possibility, that the US has no plan, and that what's going on in Ukraine is not a video game. Now, on that latter point, he argues that just trying to throw weapons into this conflict on the Ukrainian side is not going to make any real tangible difference because the people using them simply do not have the experience necessary to really use them in a way that's going to make a tangible impact on the battlefield. He says there is zero chance, and I mean zero not point anything, that Russia could ever militarily defeat NATO in a conventional sense, in other words, without nuclear weapons. It's a physical impossibility. They're just struggling even now to defeat Ukrainians in part of the Donbass, their next door neighbor. So they certainly couldn't take on a 30-member NATO military alliance. They know that. So the only way they can defend against NATO is through nuclear weapons. So if we try to think we're going to trigger Article 5 and not trigger nuclear war, I mean we're just insane and fooling ourselves. And I think it's very clear at this point in the conflict in Ukraine that Russia is not a conventionally capable military force. They had this massive miles-long convoy coming in from the north into Kiev, and the whole thing essentially got stuck in the mud. It didn't move anywhere. They ended up retreating and falling back because they just couldn't even produce the logistics necessary to conduct this successful invasion, as this former lieutenant colonel says, into their next-door neighbor. So they can't fight a conventional war against Ukraine, but... And as I've said time and time again on this channel, they have plenty of nuclear weapons. So if they can't fight a conventional war, but they would be able to fight a nuclear war, if they are confronted by a conventional NATO force, what are they going to do? Logically, they're going to hit the big red button and start using the nukes. They're going to use what they have to use to survive. This is logic that we actually figured out back in the 60s, 70s, 80s. The latter part of the Cold War. All of this stuff was slowly but surely figured out. But here we are. Still on the precipice. But there's another American general, which is also warning of a potential for World War III, but not with Ukraine, but with China. And in this case, we have a four-star general, Mike Minahan, warning his troops in a memo that was entitled February 2023, Orders in Preparation for the Next Fight. My gut tells me we will fight in 2023. I hope I am wrong. But he explained that Xi Jinping secured his third term and set his war council in October 2022. 
Taiwan's presidential elections are in 2024 and will offer Xi a, a, a reason. United States presidential elections are in 2024 and will offer Xi a distracted America. Xi's team, reason and opportunity are all aligned for 2025. The Pentagon, of course, quick to say that the comments of this one general are, quote, not representative of the department's view on China. I've done a few videos on Taiwan and China, and it's certainly another global flashpoint. And we saw all of the theatrics that went on here last year involving American congressmen, members of the Biden administration, which really didn't do anything except stir the pot. I mean, when you look at what happened last year with Taiwan and China and, and the American administration, it was what, what was it for? What was the purpose of any of that? Except to just make an already bad situation even worse. And now we have American generals warning their troops that get ready because in a few short years' time, you're going to be shipped off to the Pacific and we're going to be fighting World War III against China. This all comes down to a structure of government in the Western world that is driven by and for elites. None of this has anything to do with the average American, the average Brit. It's all so far removed from our day-to-day -day lives that people just turn a blind eye to this stuff. Foreign policy, when it comes to American presidential elections, hardly even really gets a look in when it comes to the debates and the policy platforms and what's going to happen. There was a bit more of this over the last few elections thanks to the nightmares of the war on terror and everything that that produced. But for the most part, people just don't even care about foreign affairs. That needs to change. If we want to have any hope of surviving the next few years, literally as a species, to avoid World War III, to avoid nuclear war, to avoid catastrophe, as all of these very highly qualified people are telling us that we are on the precipice on, it's time to get up to date on what's going on here. It's time to start talking to people about this. It's time to start calling your congressman, calling your member of parliament, until you get a response. And start saying, hey, no more World War III. We don't want to go in this direction. Where are you when it comes to peace? Where are you when it comes to diplomacy? In fact, don't even use the word peace. Use that word. Use the word diplomacy. Are you a diplomat? Are you a statesman? Or are you a militarist? I think that's the question that we need to start asking our so-called leaders Remember to subscribe if you're new to the channel. I'll have a lot more continuing coverage of the war in Ukraine from this critical perspective. Looking at these stories and these headlines that you will not hear on mainstream media. So please support the channel. It really helps if you can also hit like, leave me your comments below, and let's try to move the world into a better place. With enough collective effort, I think we may have a chance.